Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome, Johnny. Uh, Bell Community Meeting. Today is uh, April twenty six. Uh, so first, uh, uh, let's take some overview of the status. Uh, for Web one point ten, uh, we will create another patch release. So we are planning to uh, uh, to uh, prepare that prepare it uh, from uh, May eighth. So uh, the tentative release date may be around the the, the week uh, that weekend. Uh, that week or the next. And uh, for uh, we 1.11, we have uh, G8 it uh, on April uh, 20th. So uh, for all the uh, uh, changes, you, you can visit uh, this release notes. And uh, for we 1.12, uh, we have almost uh, done the plan. Uh, I think Daniel later will uh, go through with us for the roadmap. And uh, we have uh, uh, finished the first round of the candidate uh, EQ triage. So some for some, we have moved to uh, to the milestone, one, we 1.12 one milestone, and some still in, uh, in the candidate list. And uh, for, uh, so we will continue uh, investigate them, and then we will decide whether to uh, uh, move it into V1.12 or move it out. Uh, yeah, that that is for uh, for the for the uh, releases. And uh, another thing is the Beijing team will have a holiday uh, from this weekend, uh, and we'll be back on May 4th, and uh, some member will be back on May 8th. That's it. And uh, for some uh, individual updates, uh, myself is uh, working on uh, the investigation of 1.12 uh, candidate issues and also the breakdown of data model tasks according to the data model design. And uh, I also started some changes for, uh, for data model. Mm, that is uh, this PR. Uh, uh, we have created the data upload and data download CRD uh, into under the one we one alpha one our version. Uh, the things like uh, it seems this is the first time that we uh, we create some CRD under a version other than we one. So we have changed quite a lot of the, the the you know the code organization and also some code gener generator tool. Uh, so, uh, so uh, please help uh, to take a look at it and uh, review it and uh, and uh, uh, let us know if there is any you know uh, better way or you know according to the convention or or better practice. I have a quick uh, question to other folks on the call, like Scott Shuban. Um, we are relatively uh, new and unexperienced in this area, but in our internal discussion, there's concern that whether it is right to support different version of CRD, I mean, different version of different CRDs under the same group. Is that a conventional behavior or not? Do you have any uh, suggestion? Yeah, I don't actually haven't done much with that myself in terms of making them different. I mean, I, I know, I mean, I'm not really sure whether, as I said, it makes sense. Oh, this CRD is not stable yet. We should make it V1 alpha one versus this one is beta or, or, or V1. Um, because I know another aspect to the changing the CRD version is um, that should, allow, if we went, for example, to Valero, you know, version 2.0 that moved everything to a V2 CRDs, then you could have a V1 and a V2 Valero installed in the same cluster at the same time because they were they were using different CRD versions. Whereas right now, anytime we make a new Valero release, we update those V1 CRDs. So you can't have, for example, Valero 1.10 and 1.11 installed in two different namespaces in the same cluster because the CRDs are in conflict. Um, I don't actually have any specific experience though, you know, having one 
group using two different versions at the same time. Um, so I, I don't actually know off the top of my head whether that would be an issue or not. I don't know, Shubham, yeah. if you have any um, experience there or not. Um, so I don't have any experience with, so just to clarify, we are saying that uh, velero.io slash v1 are the existing CRDs and velero.io slash v1 alpha 1 slash here data more are the other CRDs, right? That's it. Right, yeah. right. For example, yeah. we have the backup and restore CR, which is V1, but the new yeah. CRD, yeah. because yeah. it's the first time. So naturally we, we want it to be V1 alpha one because we are not yes. sure. Uh, is, is it going to be the uh, same group um, it is. Sort of, um, group, uh, or is it going to be different? Um, yeah, I mean, the currently group. they are under the same group, but if it's wrong to do this, we can yeah. switch to other group. Okay. If we, if we don't have a quick question, maybe uh, Yonghui, um, you can add a comment uh, in the PR or in the design somewhere. And uh, as a follow up, as I'm traveling uh, here in the headquarter of VMware, I maybe have chance to meet some TLC member and uh, who is expert in Kubernetes, and uh, maybe I can ask them for advice. I, I I've done some quick research on some running. Uh, environments turns out yeah the same group they always have the same uh, version I mean, it yeah. might mm -hmm. make sense to use a different group here anyway because yeah. data mover is kind of a slightly different category of things you know different than core valero that you may not you know not, not every user would use so it might actually clarify to, to use a different group for the data mover crds versus the regular ones i'm not sure i mean i don't, I don't know if that'll break anything in the current design but th that might make sense to use the difference here and then then there's no expectation that the versions would be the same. Uh, if, if you had a different group, then, then they're totally separate. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me talk to the experts. Maybe I, I will I will give you some updates on the uh, uh, channel. I know adding to a different group may solve the problem, but it breaks the existing convention within Valero, right? I mean, currently all Valero uh, CRs are in the same group. You can also I mean, they are, they are, argue but, but, that Mm -hmm. Right, but there's also no convention for data mover because this is a totally new thing and it's it's sort of, sort of a different kind of functionality with its own. Good. So I'm, I'm not saying it needs to be a different group necessarily. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it would it might be appropriate to have it in a different group because data mover is kind of you know an extension to Valero. It's kind of a different kind of functionality that we're kind of building on top of Valero. So it's yeah, that um, that makes sense. But but in future we may introduce new CRDs, then we, we, we will be having the same problem. So I, I think we Yeah, need, I mean, uh, yeah. you're right. You should, we should resolve the fundamental question first. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the same time, we also should probably consider among the options whether it makes sense to use a different group. And maybe, maybe we don't, maybe it doesn't. But I think that's, that is an option to consider as well. And yeah, to be honest, for, for, for our product, it's probably easier to have them under the same group because there are some assumption we, I'm not sure if that's also true for OpenShift, but we have different groups for different, they're, they reflect some, manage, from management perspective, they reflect some uh, how we organize things and how things are fit together. So yeah, I, I think I will uh, talk to some experts uh, in, in, in Palo Alto, hopefully, and uh, Give you some update just just some different thoughts in my mind i don't have a very strong uh, opinion whether it should be in the same group or not but it okay. may make yeah. sense in mm -hmm. the same group but scott you're also right putting them in different group may also make sense uh, one more yeah. thought uh, these crds won't always be watched or reconciled upon by valeros controllers so that's a good point yeah. that's a good point so yeah Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks all. And uh, so it means that there are two questions. So oh, one, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I just have a, another concern. Now I start to worry after I speak to the uh, expert, maybe they, they say our idea to use different controller watch the same CR is totally wrong, but we'll see, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, we are, okay. And in terms of different controllers watching the same CR, I mean, we, we already have that with like backups anyway, where we have, you know, the backup deletion controller is dealing with, you know, backups. And so, so I mean, but it's as long as, as long as they're watching, you know, under different circumstances. So, I mean, I think, but it's a question of, you know, you do want to 
avoid kind of conflicts where two different controllers try to act upon the same in a CR at the same time on the same state, you know, we got to be careful with that. But like we have a finalized controller for backup that only that, that ignores backups not in certain phases. And so if you partition out your CR based on phase or state like that, having multiple controllers watching them shouldn't necessarily be a problem, I don't think. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're probably right, yeah. But normally like CSI, they have the structure like the same controller and call different drivers via gRPC. So, but we, we uh, apply a simpler uh, design, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think we can continue. Okay. So I think the, the core question is here. Uh, so whether uh, that whether it makes sense to have two different versions on, uh, under the uh, single uh, group, right? Yeah. And uh, then following up, we may have other discussion like uh, uh, whether we want to uh, have the data more uh, into a single uh, group. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I think we we can continue the discussion in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, is this, this PR or we can discuss uh, in the in, in the uh, Slack channel? Okay. Uh, let's see what new information we will get later. Uh, thanks, thanks, Nanyu. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, for my part. And uh, the next one, Shin, please. Uh, I work on 1.9.7 and 1.11 releasing and. Uh... I am working on enable more linters for Valero now. And uh, for the linters, um, I think some linter reported warning are uh, breaking change. And uh, I already created a PR, but may need to consider that whether it is um, needed. Um, for example, some uh, for example, the 1.73, 1.73, that is the revival part one. It's one? No, no. Uh, 1.73. Oh, okay. okay. It's one, right? Right, right, thanks. It renamed some options. Uh, uh, some structure and uh, some method name. Uh, uh, please nav navigate down a little bit to the command command package, CMD, CMD package. Okay, here. Yeah. yeah, for example, this one. Uh, it renamed the install options to options. Um, I, I think this warning makes sense. Uh, uh, it basic basically because um, this package name is installed and no need to include the package name into the uh, structure too. So uh, it suggests to rename it to just options, uh, but because it is uh, exported, uh, exported in the um, structure, um, the rename still has some risk to break the users, may import, may import this, this, this structure. I personally think that's okay. I mean, I, I think the change is a good change. And uh, for breaking change, I, I don't think we really want to worry about making break change to every, I mean, each package. I mean, um, for breaking change, I personally think we just need to focus on the API. Does, does that make sense? Um, Scott and Shuban, because otherwise there will be a too much overhead for us to be compatible. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think there's two levels of breaking change here. I, I, I think Shuban had mentioned something in one of the comments that, I mean, if you're talking about changing the name of something, um, you know, as long as that's something that's, I mean, that'll be an obvious thing when you you know pull in your depth and things don't work anymore because the name is different. And you can, you know, it's a, if it's a simple update to the user that's using this package to change the names of what they call things, mm -hmm. I think that's acceptable, you know, in a new release, um, mm -hmm. you know, not in a patch release, but in like a new one. But if you're talking about something that, you know, is currently exported that you want to make private, I think that's a bad kind of breaking change because then if someone is relying on this API, um, there's no way for them to get to it anymore. 
Yeah, but mm -hmm. but per by API, I think we mean. So so, how do we define API? I mean, by API, I, I normally but, think that's a CR of well, the uh, well, you talk about CR, but, but but what I mean is that if 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 you have a package with you know code in it that anyone who imp includes the Valero you know packages in their the GoLang code and they're using a, a function that's that's here and you make it a private function that's no longer available to that user, then they, then they can't upgrade their code to use it. If you change the name of it or you change the method signature to add a field or remove a field, that's all things that users can respond to. Um, but if, if you make it completely private, for example, uh, like the, uh, and the relevance here is that the OADP installer um, uses the install package. Um, you know, we, we don't use the Valero CLI install, but we use the install package um, to add you know additional ADP things to that as well. So if that package were to completely go away with no replacement, or were to be say if a bunch of these uh, functions were to were to be no longer exported, then that would be a breaking change that wouldn't necessarily have an obvious um, fix, other than copying and pasting a bunch of code elsewhere. But if you're just talking about changing the name, you know, from install options to options or whatever, but it's still exported, that's a breaking change that can be uh, worked around and fixed pretty easily by just, you know, when we update to the new version, we just change the names, you know, that's an easy change. Mm -hmm. So, so are you saying we need to be careful with the slash PKG uh, subdirectory and uh, for, for example, the internal uh, directory, uh, we are okay to make break changes because in, in terms of removing or un exporting uh, functions, I, I find that that's normal when we, uh, you know, iterate on, on versions. So you're saying for every, for all the code under slash PKG directory, we should not make breaking change as long as they are exported? Uh, well, I mean, and again, breaking change is kind of a general category because anytime you change the name of something that's exported, that's a breaking change because anyone who's using it, their code won't compile anymore. They're gonna have to change that, you know, but if it's a breaking change like that, that can, or if you're adding new, you know, Adding new, you know, changing method signatures and all that is a pretty common kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. you know new, new release. So we have some new mm -hmm. parameters we need. We've got to make this change here. Um, mm -hmm. But I would be concerned about something that was you know, exported and available multiple versions and others might be relying on it. And then you make it completely unexported. You make it impossible for a user to call that now. Um, then they have to figure out what do we do? Do we, you know, do they have to copy and paste this code into their, make their own, you know, own and you know, so that that's where I'm saying, if you take something that's public now that users may, especially if it's if it's a if it's a public function that you know we know for sure that you know someone's using it and because we 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 can give an example you know this project is using this function right now um, if you change the name that's fine they can respond to that if you add or remove parameters because your functionality changes that's fine but yeah. making it completely unexported so that they can't call it anymore. I think that's, you would need a very strong justification to say it's gotta be this way um, and it's a problem um, and, and work with the user then to figure out yeah, how they're gonna get that function Yeah, out. I understand. So Scott, you mentioned the in, important point that if there's a function, we know for sure that it's used by other users. But but from my uh, perspective, uh, I I don't think we, we know for sure. So. So I think yeah, I, we I just thought, be, um, Bomb yeah. or Tiger comment on the PR with some examples of what we were yeah. using. Yeah. So 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 we just handled it case by case, right? That that's what you were suggesting. So probably some break change is acceptable are acceptable as long as it doesn't nobody cares or it's acceptable for you to make the downstream change. Because yeah, there are exactly. so many I mean, unknown I mean, users using the Valero package, that's possible, but we, we really can't cover all their requirements. Otherwise, there will be too much overhead, right? Yeah, I, I, that makes sense. And especially, yeah. like I said, if we're talking about changing names and, you know, there will be some breaking changes. And as long as there are changes that someone developing with this with enough time built into their schedule to, you know, to test with the new release and all that, that, that makes sense. And, you know, anyone who's going to be building something on off of Valera 112, and this includes OADP, you know, we're gonna be using and testing with some of this stuff along the way. So if we do end up merging something that removes something that, you know, is needed for OADP to compile with, 
it'll be obvious in the development cycle and then we can raise it. Hey, you know, we just committed something to main that removes this function that we need. Can we talk about putting it back? Um, you know, I think as we go through the development process, that makes sense. And that's where, uh, again, we're putting the comments in here now saying for these specific functions, we know we're using them. So let's be careful with them. Now, yeah, even yeah, even sure. when we say be careful with that doesn't mean we can't change it. It means yeah. whatever we whatever we change needs to be a change that we can work with, which, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so we'll, we'll yeah, put in the sure. examples, and the thing is, we most likely use uh, just the install package. And uh, as Scott mentioned, if we don't, if if we just make those things unexported, then it might affect not just us; uh, it will affect other users as well who are integrating with. Yeah, but but I only care about. I, I mean, because you are also maintainers, so. I think there are some users are more important than, than other. I, 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 does that sound bad? <laughs> but I mean, because one package can be imported by some random guy. If, mm -hmm. if they jump out and say, we can't make breaking changes, sometimes we have to ignore their uh, feedback maybe. Mm -hmm. So as long as all the maintainers agree, I think we, we, we can make great change. We just need to be more careful. I think yeah. that's acceptable for everyone. Okay. Uh, we can yeah. make breaking changes to which the user can respond. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that doesn't mean there's not the possibility we have, uh, make, you know, there may, there may be something here that's exported that we think, hey, there's, we can't think of any use cases for this to be exported. We change it to make it unexported because we're not aware of anyone using it. That's fine. Um, then we get a, someone realizes that it breaks them, and they put in the issue, and then we can make that decision. Oh, okay, maybe we should put this back. We can revert this right. change, or, or right. you know, kind of react right. to it, kind of case by yeah. case. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is take the case by case yeah. approach. And thank you I for think, the review, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the current uh, problem we are discussing only happen when some user is uh, developing or import the the code from Velaro directly, and by that, uh, they can change, uh, make the uh, make the change accordingly uh, in their uh, development cycle uh, when they import the new release, new version of Velaro, right? So yeah. as long as uh, as long as we are having uh, we are, we are doing the right thing or going to the right direction, like uh, make the Velaro code more healthy, I think it it's worth it. Change that and uh, so. The ones that is using the code need to change that, change change the, their code accordingly. Also, yeah, and again, I think that makes sense. And and in most cases, users just need to update what they're dealing with to to work with the new version. The, the only case where we would have this discussion of hey, we need to revert this or we need to make a change here would be if we refactor the code in Valero in such a way to make some use case impossible, which. This is an edge case. I mean, we just need to deal with that as case by case as it happens. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't anticipate that happening, but if it does, then we can, you know, deal with it appropriately, and come up with some answer that fixes what we were trying to accomplish, while at the same time allowing another user to work with it. And that doesn't mean no breaking changes. It just means that we need to be able to, you know, they need to be able to, kind of react to the changes to work with the new code base and possibly adding something back in to that end but again let this is very abstract now let's just say that if we know of cases where things are still needed let's identify them up front like we already are and if there's something we're not aware of now and we only become aware of it when someone pulls in you know a, a commit that was merged and then it breaks them then we can figure out what breaks and, and deal with it can, can i ask a dumb question real quick why in this particular case would the deprecation policy not be followed and, and we can rip out a particular function and wait for user feedback to signal that uh, it broke them? I, I, I think this is, this does, this, these changes are, are not at the level of a, of a published feature or an API. Um, okay. Right. You know, in, in other words, we don't deprecate every single function or every single package that sure. might change. That, that and, then, and so we're talking about details, you know, implementation details that are exposed, which means someone might be using, but we're not talking about published APIs, um, documented right. things, you know. It, it, this came up with ODP because we specifically take that install package 
and use that in the OEDP and, you know, the, the code in OEDP then installs Valero. Um, and so we're relying on publicly exported functions, um, which aren't a published API, which means we're not telling Valero, hey, don't change this ever. Um, but what we are saying is we rely on this. And so any changes we need to be able to react to. But there's no okay. deprecation involved here because this is kind of at a lower level of detail. Sure. OK, that makes sense. Thanks, Scott. Sure. Yeah, thanks. OK, thanks, Sarah. Uh, so, uh, do you have anything else? Uh, no, uh, nothing more for update. OK, thanks. And the next, uh, Wenka, please. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm investigating uh, the 1.12 kind of uh, issues assigned to me and uh, will determine whether uh, there will be a scope in 1.12 or not. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thanks. That's all. Um, yeah, not a lot of uh, Blair work in the last week. I was actually at um, KubeCon. Um, the great thing there is I actually was able to meet up with um, Orlin and pretty deep in person as well as we had some conversations with uh, Satya of uh, Cloud Casa. Um, um, you know, he gave us a demo a couple of weeks ago of the UI and hosted UI that they have put in place um, for managing Valero across clusters. Um, so we had some good conversations with them as uh, with him as well. Um, um, but in terms of specific Valero work, um, kind of put my um, end-to-end -end test work on hold. Uh, I hope to resume that again this week, uh, the end-to-end -end test for the VIV2. Uh, so hope to get that going again uh, locally this week. OK, thanks. And I have one question. Uh, what is the ver version Cloud Casa is using right now? I mean, the um, UI. I think it's one ten. I asked them in the community meeting. Yeah, that, that sounds oh. right. Um, you know, and, and again, um, right now, um, they don't. You know, they have a hosted service that, that runs across multiple clusters. Um, I w we did talk a little bit. Again, they they do hope to release a kind of single cluster version of this as an open source upstream uh, project. Um, at this point, that doesn't exist. So there isn't any code you can you know download and and install, uh, although apparently you can sign up on their hosted service for a free a free, a free tier to sort of test it out. Um, and, but yeah, I think they're, they, they've tested it with up through 110 now. And so once 111 comes out, um, I don't know what the time, I'm not sure what the time frame is for when that becomes supported, um, but. And I know, I know they are testing with the, the, the Mainly with the, 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 the primary you know, upstream Valero releases. I know they're doing some testing also with OADP, um, although I don't, I don't know how much they do with that. Um, and, I'm not, and then, of course, right now they have their own fork that they're working with. But again, I think they, they want to work towards um, not so much relying on you know, changes in their own fork um, you know, in the future. But I, again, I don't know how extensive the changes are or any of that. Um, that wasn't clear. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And uh, the next one, uh, Chuming. Hey, I'm doing the analysis in optimize of the end and the test. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And uh, uh, I'm working on a uh, Valero CI uh, to support this mover test scenario, uh, which is uh, can uh, perform backup, backup and restore across providers. Uh, and also uh, some uh, nightly issue caused by PR of fixing uh, linked uh, warnings. Uh, I'm working on that. Yeah, that's a question also I have for Shubang and Scott. Since you are delivering um, your data mover uh, post Valero 1.11, so um, as for defining the test scenarios, I think definitely you can reach out to Shubang or Scott mm -hmm. to get some guidance also, right? Yeah, sure thing. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all from me. Okay. Oh, okay, that's for the update. And uh, for the uh, topics, so I think uh, Daniel have two topics. So uh, time to you, Daniel. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Let, me, uh, let me open that. Uh, one second. Mm. 
Yeah. Not quite used to it. There's only one uh, screen. Um, so uh, we have uh, some internal discussion uh, within the Valero development team. Um, so um, there we propose a tentative timeline. I mean, we define the several uh, milestones as before. First is a feature freeze. Um, so after the feature freeze, there will not be any 1.12 candidates. Any issue will be either in the milestone or out of uh, 1.12. So that is a main 31st. So that give us more buffer to add new issues into 1.12. And the feature complete date, um, we are targeting the mid of July. Um, and after that, based on our previous experience, there are four to five weeks between the FC to the GA date. So these are the following dates uh, I put in the put on in the wiki. Um, so um, first, I want to check with you guys: Are you uh, okay with this date? Uh, other maintainers or developers? So um, I mean, there's a month month that we can add. We are open to and you know add new uh, issues uh, into the milestone. So this is basically four months from um, one point eleven in terms of uh, you know approximately uh, in terms of the full from from GA to GA. Right, right. Um, yeah, and um, Shibam or Wes, I, I don't have any specific insight on our next ODP release and where this fits in, but this looks just as a pure upstream point of view. I think this is a timeline that makes sense to me. Um, I don't know if there's any changes we'd want to hear or not, but other than yeah. I yeah, I want to explicitly point out one risk is that uh, in terms of release cadence, considering there is a Christmas and uh, a Chinese national holiday uh, in Q4, so it may put us a little bit risky to deliver three minor releases a year, but I think you, you guys are okay we deliver only two minor releases, right? I think we, we, we've we been working under the right intentions, and I think that's what's important. Yeah, Christmas yeah. can, and those and holidays yeah. can uh, get in the right. way. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think I think we're kind of thinking in, in general of, hey, about four months here. But, you know, like you said, you know, December is something that kind of, you know, everybody's going to have more time off there and less focus. And so we just have to keep that in mind that, you know, one dot 13 yeah. um, might take a little longer um, to get out than one dot yeah. you know, 12. Yeah. But yeah. but I don't I don't think we should necessarily change these dates based on you know one dot thirteen. Let's just figure out whether this makes sense for the features we're proposing mm -hmm. we deliver and you know for anything that you know depends on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as for the major features, I I only put on two of them here. Maybe I'll add more. The first thing is the support default data mover as uh, Yong Hui has been uh, you know discussing with you guys since one dot eleven eleven time frame. And there's a design and we also define an epic. I won't open it. There's a long list of tasks um, we've uh, defined. Um, so this is, uh, we, we, we want to treat it as an anchor feature. That means um, we won't release 1.12 until we consider this one done. For, for example, if, we, if this needs four more weeks, we delay uh, 1.12 four more weeks because this is really important to us and uh, we really want to deliver that in the next minor release. Um, so uh, any comments or disagreements about this? That, that seems totally reasonable. Yeah, okay. Makes, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the other one is uh, proposed by Anshu from Microsoft. Um, he's really active, like adding enhancements to Valero. And this one, he told me that is more important for them, which is the JSON substitution policy. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think I that's a think... good, good feature. Yeah. Um, we've, uh, on the Red Hat side, we've definitely had requests from customers that this would meet a need for. Um, you know, when, um, then, you know, I think this, this will handle a lot of use cases where, you know, in the past, we've always said, hey, you have to write a plugin but th there might be some small tweak you want to make that doesn't really warrant a separate plugin for it that this would actually resolve uh, an issue war. So, so I think okay. this is a good feature to get in. Yeah, so I, I'm moving this to 1.12 miles only is FYI. Um, yeah, and uh, in addition to that, I also added design or investigation section to uh, imply 
what we may spend time that does not deliver in the next minor release, but we want to investigate. Hopefully we do that in the next release after 112. The first thing is the versioning of Valero CRs. I opened an issue, but I, I still need more discussion to get more concrete idea. But I, I have the feeling that we may need to consider introduce some break change into Valero CR. Then there will be some question regarding um, how do we uh, introduce the a conversion webhook, uh, whether or not do we need to support different versions of CRs in the same Valero instance. Um, and is that okay? We have V1 and V2 um, of CRDs at the same time in Valero. But I think uh, hopefully uh, in 1.12, we can uh, have more discussion around this topic and take some action in the next release. Uh, I, I would say the biggest issue that, that in terms of the question of supporting multiple that, that we're going to have to deal with is to make sure that we don't break, you know, backup compatibility so that a backup made with the All version right. V1 uh, and then you want to restore. And, and maybe you saw that with conversion, but the point is we need to be able to take a backup in that uh, backup storage location right. from, you know, Valero 1.11 and restore it in this new version of a lot that uses V2CRs, you know, within the the, range, the 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 version range that we say we support. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's a specific concern with the backup C, but basically, the, I mean, the backup CR is the obvious one, but really yeah. anything that gets put into the object store, you know, backup. Um, yeah. But there is also a the versioning of the backup format, I think. In the yeah, well, there's backup. the backup format, but I also mean, the, but the, but we also have the backup CR itself in YAML. Right. Now, right. Correct. That's a that's a good point. You may be able to resolve that with conversions or something. Um, I'm not saying we necessarily have to support two CR versions at the same time. What I'm saying is that whatever we have in that um, object store, including the backup metadata file, um, that needs to be supported. If that that might mean grabbing the JSON and transforming it into a, you know, V2, um, or it might mean supporting them both. I don't know. As long as, long as we, we support fully that backup, um, I, don't, I think the implementation is less important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you, Scott. And please make sure you add a comment in the issue and um, uh, yeah, we're going to resolve them all and uh, try to write a design hopefully in 1.12. Um, well, you're gonna do that, right, Scott? <laughs> I had a comment to this issue uh, about oh, yeah. your yeah, yeah. Thank you. And uh, the other one is we, we are trying to figure out is it possible to you know download artifacts without accessing object store. That's something um, yeah we have been discussing with you also. And uh, from our side, we really want to support uh, uh, the unified data path, and uh, we want to support user uh, using. In FS as a backhand for, you know, storing backup. So um, uh, having to access object store uh, to yeah. you know in backup uh, describe and download requests is clearly uh, uh, a yeah. uh, On the question of NFS, I think we also want to consider, um, you know, it, for, I mean, I know in the past when this has come up, you know, it seemed to me that the 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 first thought as to how you would implement it would actually be, well, we just need to write a an object store plugin like Valero plugin for you know AWS, Valero plugin for NFS, or you know Valero plugin for file system, and basically implement those object store APIs, which writes to a backend file system. And if you did that, then you wouldn't have to make any core Valero changes. You would just need a new plugin. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's appropriate here, but I think when when we make that um, when we have that discussion about supporting backup on NFS, um, one possible implementation there would be just to write an object store plugin that writes to a file system. Um, and so then, yeah. then you don't need any changes to core Valero. You just create you know, the Valero plugin for NFS, um, you know, parallel to, to the AWS and the Azure and the GCP ones. Yeah, understood. But I think the unified data path is a bigger uh, story. Um, um, I, I think that will require yeah, more Yeah, the, 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 that, that is a bigger yeah. story. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I don't know that we need that bigger story solved in order to do NFS backups, because I think you can do the NFS backups by just writing another plugin. But, but we Again, still need to handle the download request. Yeah. Yeah, actually. But that, uh, one, but that one, yeah, that one has 
uh, you know, dependency on the certain object stores to return the download URL and you, you uh, can't do that. With, yeah. That's true. That, yeah, yeah. So there, there may be issues there. Uh, I, it, it may be that we need to resolve the download questing first, then for that reason. Right. Um, but I think there are separate questions to to resolve, but they're related. You know, because one may depend on the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Actually, uh, uh, this uh, this part uh, this uh, investment item is for multiple purposes. The first of all, uh, so uh, Scott, we have discussed a little bit during the. Uh, the discussion about the uh, BIV2 that uh, the backup uh, uh, that, that details are yep. required to download something from the object store. That is uh, the first thing. And the second right. thing that, uh, you know, in some on premise environments, that their client will not be able to access the, uh, the object store, whatever it is, the object store is. And uh, because of some network, Isolation. They will have. They have no access to their object store directly. So in that kind of environment, the client will not be able to uh, 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 to take advantage uh, to fully take advantage of the uh, the feature like download something uh, from the client side. And the, the finally, uh, that is a big story about the uh, the, the the unified uh, uh, data paths. Uh, so uh, to solve the problem that, that uh, to to support the uh, file system uh, target is one uh, one thing, and 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 we 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 also have some more requirement like uh, we want to put everything into a backup store so that uh, we can support the, the uh, one feature like uh, a repo replication and something like that. So, but yeah, that's a big story. But I think uh, we think that uh, the uh, the unified data pass will rely on the current uh, thing we are talking about that is not download uh, from the object store from the client. That, yeah, that is uh, the three point. Yeah, thanks. And the last but not least, uh, something we want to uh, consider is plugins for backup and restore. I recall there was a PR regarding a design for the backup or restore level hooks, uh, which oh. is, please go ahead. Oh yeah, these are the plugins, yeah, the post back. So I think the idea was four different plugin types. One that would run before the backup started before, and, and these are these are not associated with items. They're not item actions, they're like backup right. level actions. So there was right. one to run before the backup, one after and same with restore. Right, right. Yeah, those proposals were, were submitted um, I think it was about, about a year, year and a half ago now, but um, the people involved in those uh, are no longer involved in the Valero community. So that right. those didn't really go anywhere, but the proposals are still, uh, I think they're in PRs. I don't know, I can't remember what yeah. was merged and what wasn't, yeah. but. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do the double check. And uh, yeah, I plan to, you know, find that out and somehow uh, reconsider implementing it or, you know, refine yeah. the design and uh, uh, make sure there's something we can deliver. Because, yeah, th those are yeah. Th that's another example of of um, you know proposals that um, I know we actually had come up with even with the Red Hat side a few use cases that those would help us with if they were available but they weren't there yet. So I'd definitely be interested in seeing those um, you know get some attention again. Yeah, you mean there are more items you want to? No, no. What, what I mean is those backup and restore level plugins are ones that in the past we've. We've come up with use cases where having those would be helpful. Um, okay. I mean. Okay. Like, in other words, OADP could use that feature if it were available uh, for some of the things. There, there, there have been things we've talked about that you know, for example, you know, well, one of the things that's very complicated to deal with with Valero and OpenShift is deployment configs. They're harder than the deployments to deal with. Yep. Uh, Rustic in particular. Yep. Um, you know, we've had to do some plug-in work, kind of jump through some hoops because with deployment configs, when you restore that deployment config. It redeploys the pod with a different name, which breaks Rustic. Um, and I think Cobia with this movie the same same issue, um, although we haven't you know tested it with that. And so we've had a plugin where we scale down the deployment config and disconnect the pod so that Rustic could act on the pod post restore. But then we have to run a shell script post restore that cleans that up. That's a perfect right. example of if we had those post restore right. hooks or plugins. Right that could do that for us. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I yeah, I, I don't want to go too much in detail, but it, it's great that you also have the requirements. So, so we should definitely collaborate on this. But yes. generally, the thought is, yeah, we want to make Valero the backup and restore workflow in Valero more customizable to suit different cases. I think generally yep. that's a direction we should yep. keep moving on. Yep. And one of the examples given, I know in those proposals was, uh, for example, in some cases you wanted to have a free backup um, um, hook or you know plugin that would actually say shut down a database or something before you right. started the backup. So you would get right. consistent in a file system data run the backup and then your post backup would start it up again so uh, you know right. i think there, there are a lot of a lot of use cases that those plugins would help with um right yeah yeah absolutely so yeah so that's something you want to work on together and yeah definitely to, interested in yeah. talking through that and yeah. know, we'll see what makes sense there yeah yeah and, and there there the so I'm going to go go faster. Then there's a backup and the restore controller refactor. Um, we have been uh, working on, you know, to move to up to move, shift them to another programming model, but we are still using the client sets. So there are some details you need to working on. And I think we, we want to try to remove more of them and uh, make the programming model in Valero more consistent. And in terms of quality, um, yeah, we also set some goals to improve this UI coverage. So uh, if other folks can um, consider to do some contribution in this uh, aspect, that will be also helpful. Um, we also want to publish the performance test more regularly. So uh, we, 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 we provide a more um, predictable uh, output for each release. That's something we're going to work on. Um, so yeah, that's all for the 112 roadmap. It's still a draft. If you have any comments, uh, please also, uh, you know, uh, feel free to uh, send a message in the Slack channel. And uh, I think we're going to leave it in the draft state for a couple of weeks. And after that, we consider it finalized. That's it. And another uh, topic from me is, let me open the uh, hack and be. It's several uh, specific uh, issues. Um, the, there is a substitution we've already discussed. And there are two, I think a guy from Dell EMC called Ivan pinged me about this one. Um, are there any uh, user from Dell EMC on the call? I think Yun Chen, you, you've worked for Dell EMC, right? Yeah, Ivan is my colleague. So- uh, but He didn't show up today. Okay, so um, I wanna quickly discuss this with other maintainers. Mm -hmm. um, and try to make decision on these ones. Uh, first thing is, okay. uh, is it the feature you mentioned before. The feature you mentioned, like yeah, yeah. He pinged me uh, after one a community meeting, say um, we should consider uh, implement them in one twelve. But personally, I don't consider them very high mm -hmm. priority. Uh, I I don't know what's your opinion, Scott and Shuban. For example, adding new, generally, um, because we are considering the versioning of backup CR, so I try to refrain from adding too many uh, new fields in the backup spec and the additional resources, uh, we have different ways to implement it in, instead of adding it to backup spec. For example, uh, Ming, we have introduced this uh, resource policy uh, maybe we can add that in the policy so we don't add making the backup CR too large. And also uh, this can be worked around by, you know, uh, writing your own backup item action and return additional items, or you use the label selectors. So there are so many options. So I personally consider this one not a very high priority. I'm not sure if there's any disagreement. I mean, I think um, it's it's definitely a real use case. I, I think the challenge really is to make if we can come up with a design for this that makes sense that doesn't you know make the backup CR more confusing. Um, and I, I, I mean, to, to me, a question of priority is more. I mean, if we say it's a higher or lower priority, it's more a question of whether we have the resources to work on it. And if, if you know if if he's going to implement this, you know, then that that solves that question. The the bigger question is: is there anything in this design that 
you know, would be a problem for, you know, like I said, we don't want to be adding things to the CR that makes it confusing or hard for users to understand. And we have so many ways of selecting things. We need to be very careful um, about that. Um, I think the problem is that I think the use case described here is a valid one. I, I just don't know, you know, if it's going to be difficult to come up with a design here. I think uh, the API part that, that's, you know, clear enough that doesn't make things too complicated. Um, but I don't, because I think the idea here is because right now, all of our selection is either we either use label selectors or we, you know, specify things by um, by type. Um, right. You know, the, and this was this was a way of also saying, oh, I also want to, you know, include pods, but only the pod with this name, and you know that that kind of thing. I, I don't know if that because right now that that other, um, you know, re, the policy, you know, where where we were able to specify, you know, skip specific PVs with certain characteristics. Um, I don't know if that's flexible enough to also be able to say, hey, I also want to add these other things that aren't PVCs. You know, I, I want to add all pods with this name or I want to, you know, do something like that. Um, that might be a place that that makes sense. Um, I, I haven't really looked at that in spe specifically. Um, uh, the problem with label selectors is right now, at least the way it works in Valero, is once you use a label selector, that gets applied to everything. So if I want to use a label selector, Mm -hmm. then everything in the backup has to have that label you know you know there's there's no way of saying oh include all these things and also use a label selector you know as an additional thing because the label selector then gets applied to everything and, and, and it removes those things you know if the label doesn't match um yeah so i'm gonna uh I think at one point there was also a suggestion. I don't remember which issue it was. It's been a while of of, of actually taking the 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 fields we use the, the existing fields for include next include exclude resources um, and provide a way to somehow include names in there too. But again, that could make it more confusing depending on how it's implemented, and we would have to be careful there. Um, I think. Um, it's just something you know in general that's a it's a risk with any of this selection. I think one thing to consider at all of these use cases um, is I think one question to ask when we we start talking about hey let's let's add this super flexible way of of doing things is in in some cases the right answer may be instead of finding a way to do all of this in one backup, the answer is you make two backups, you know, one backup by type and a second backup that uses the label selector, for example. And then and sometimes sometimes that's the easiest way to partition your your workloads in, in, in a way to, you know, select things coherently is you may just need to make two backups. Um, yeah, but that makes consistency uh, even more challenging because you, you're making two backups, but they logically should be one. Yeah, right. And that, that, that's, um, but, but I mean, this is, this, so this is a use case, for example, where the only real way of doing this right now is to make two backups. You know, if, if I want, you know, all PVCs, but deployments only with the, but this one deployment, you know, things like that, that some of that kind of combining, I want all these types, but I also want these specific deployments, these specific um secrets um there's no way of doing that right now in valero um and you could label those specific things you want with labels lecture but then you'd have to do two backups because there's no way of doing that together in one backup the way labels lectures work yeah yeah actually that's also a a, a, a requirement for enhancement in flexibility so yeah i think that that's align with the thought we just discussed we need more customizability and the flexibility but, but the, the question is how do we do that right right so, exactly yeah. so so this pr we're looking at so this this issue we're looking at right now is one example of you know one user's um requests for more flexibility in, in in one direction and then we have other things and so i think we just need to come up if we do something like this we need to be careful about doing it and you know right 
you know, if we add five different ways of, of selecting things based on five different users, specific use case, um, then you just end up with even more confusion and you're still, not, you're still not solving all the use cases. So, but at the same time, we don't want to push everyone off and say, we don't want to do any of this stuff because right. these are real, you know, real world scenarios that we ought to, we need to solve. We just need to solve in a way that's coherent and easy for users to understand. And we need to make sure that what we implement does that. Yeah, so, right. So, and, currently, and, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to remember, um, Wes, do you, do you remember what um, I think Pradeep was talking about something at the KubeCon about, you know, the notion of, of wanting to have multiple backups where there's kind of some notion of uh, priority. So, you know, you'd have backup one, backup two, and backup three. And then when you restore, you restore in the opposite order. So it's just some idea of chaining backups to where they're related to each other. I, th I, I don't, I didn't hear the whole part of that discussion. But that, that, that something like that might be related or helpful here. I think we dropped from the call. Oh, okay, got it. So, um, but 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 there was a discussion I, I heard part of um, that was talking about. Uh, I believe it was you know the notion that you might have you know maybe it's a schedule that that, that runs two backups or something, uh, and then the, and there's some order between them saying okay you know you want to do backup one followed by backup two. And then you then you restore it in the opposite order. And I think the basic use case there was you might have two different namespaces with two different applications that one depends on the other. So you know you want to have them have them in separate backups because maybe they're different users or whatever. But there's some priority of you know one depends on two, so you need to back it up in a certain order and restore in a certain order. If we had that kind of notion, that would also possibly work help for some of these cases. Or maybe you just have, you know, a backup that takes certain types and then a second backup that takes a label selector and kind of combines those two. Um, so, I, you know, there's there's lots of ways to start to approach this, but um, yeah, we just have to keep the API usability in mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because we are running out of time, I'll quickly, uh, you know, talk about this uh pull request i think these two came up um as a similar uh request or like they want a more flexibility in terms of you know resource selection so um i i will also uh comment in this pr to suggest you know apply the uh, uh resource policy approach and yeah. um yeah, and we'll see if we can make the design merge. Yeah, I think the field selectors one in particular, I think, does align more with the resource policy because the field selectors is basically saying, hey, I want to select items based on, hey, this value in metadata is something. And that's kind of like the in the resource policy where we're saying, you know, I want to skip this PVC if it meets certain characteristics. Um, so it may be that, um, you know, we can include or exclude, you know, if the resource, if the the policy um, selection policy or whatever, um, that functionality has some way of either in including or excluding based on, um, you know, metadata. Mm -hmm. Right. Probably, um, Yunqian, do you know if, for example, if this is implemented, this will be less uh, important for Ivan or do you, do you know the status of these mm. um, issue of PRs? To be honest, I'm not very quite sure, but you can, Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. I think if we can think of a way to do the resource policy in a way that meets the requirements for the first, because again, if we're talking about adding additional resources by name or whatever, the resource policy using field selectors or something, you know, again, metadata.name is something we might be able to include there. So that, that might meet those requirements. Um, I, I do think that these two are very similar. And so mm -hmm. if we do, decide that we can fit something like this into, you know, the API changes. Um, we needed some kind of unified thing that's, you know, one change that meets that set of needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, we can continue the discussion with Ivan, but generally the, I think a general uh, agreement is that we will uh, ask him to refine the design and the, we review them and uh, we'll see whether it will be part of 112 based on the status, right? 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that's a combination of getting the design approved in time, and then from a from an implementation point of view, you know, if he's able to implement it, um, and he said, you know, th th then the priority question becomes less relevant because it, you know, I mean, obviously, it takes some resources from the maintainers because we've got to review, you know, PRs and all that. But the point is, the the most important part is getting the design, um, you know, approved. Uh, and yeah, that's, you know, yeah, but by implementation, I, I would suggest also, you know, implement these uh, end to end tasks, also make update to the documentation. Um, right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's definitely needs to be part of the implementation. Right, right, right. So, Yun Chen, if you have some internal discussion with Ivan, mm -hmm. please. So yeah, no, your, your opinion is better not include this in 1.2. Right. So, if I say that again? Uh, your opinion is better to not include this design on this release? Um, my personal preference at the moment is that we can uh, merge the design in 112 and implement in 113 if it's okay for you guys. Because, yeah, yeah, that doesn't seem to be very high priority for me, to be honest. Then maybe can delay further. But but at a general, uh, as a general direction, I think we want to make sure we don't make too much change to the spec of the CRs mm -hmm. until we, uh, I mean, before we have a, a agreement in terms of versioning. Okay. Uh, could you share this link on the chat? And then I will ping Ivan. Yeah. And I guess the good thing would be if if we do if the if the resource um, policy approach is something that works here, um, that would minimize the CRD change, you know the, you know, the API change there, because um, then it would just be a new. But 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 again, like you said, the, the first thing we just need to get the you know design going because uh, sometimes, especially if there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of changes needed, that process itself can take some time. So so even if we just set we said hey we want this in one thirteen. Ideally, we get the design approved in 112 uh, in that time frame, just because um, that that process can sometimes take a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, because we also have other jobs, so sometimes the design, you know, have the design reviewed on time. It, it, it's really a challenge for us. So, um, but that that's how it is at the moment. We'll try, but I, I cannot make any commitment for you know third party uh, pull request. For, for the designs from VMware or Red Hat because we're maintainers. And uh, also the Microsoft guys, they, they are really active and uh, doing the contribution. I think we kind of prioritize certain designs more than others. That's the how it is at the moment. And uh, yeah, we, we probably, you know, be keeping like this for a while. Hopefully everyone is okay with this uh, situation. Okay, I think that's all I, I want to talk about in this discussion. And uh, we are five minutes uh, over the schedule. So thank you, guys. Oh, you okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we have finished all the items. Thank, thank you, everyone. Uh, we can finish off here today. Thanks for joining. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye, -bye.